Hi, software. Welcome back from a very long break. Um, we are diving back into things today with the start of our unit two, where we are going to be learning about for loops and iteration. There is no starter code for today, so please make sure that you open up an empty editor and get ready to code along. Just as a reminder, you probably want to name this editor something smart, like, for example, 2.0. 0, 0.0 intro to for loops because that is what your lesson is called that way when you go to look for your notes you know exactly where they are because this for all intents and purposes is your notes for this class once you have renamed it go up to file click on save to make sure that this is going to stash in your account and remember to save at the end of the code along as well to make sure you have all your changes then we're going to go ahead and dive right in guys it's been a minute Make sure you have your two browser windows, one with the code along that I am doing, and then one with your editor. And just a reminder that you can always pause, rewatch, whatever you need to do to make sure you understand what we are talking about. Um, we are going to start by imagining that I wanted you to draw a series of ellipses across the screen. So imagine like circle, 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 all the way across the screen. Just think in your head, how you might go about doing this. And I realized that lots of you are thinking, if I wanted like six circles in a row, I would write ellipse six times and I would mess with the numbers until I have six spaced apart and I have a row. And there's nothing wrong with this, but something we should always be on the lookout as programmers for is when we see repetition in our code, it's usually a sign that we could do something differently or better to make our code a little more efficient. And part of this, you guys have heard me say before, is that programmers are like inherently very lazy people. We have to do a lot of really hard work. We don't want to do extra work. We don't want to have to read extra lines of code that can look confusing and scary. We want to make everything as seamless and as smooth as possible. And that is where our friend the for loop comes in. The for loop, which is F-O-R, not the number four, F-O-R, is a looping system that is going to tell the computer to do something for every new value of a variable. So we are gonna start by making a for loop together. We're gonna see how this works. And then you guys are gonna practice making two for loops on your own and I will explain those at the end of the video. So let's go ahead and get started in the draw function. So I'm gonna put my cursor at the end of line six after background. And I'm just gonna drop down a few lines to give myself space. Please just take note that everything I am doing is inside the draw function, which begins on line 5 and ends on line 10. So inside of that draw function, I am going to create a for loop, which is always going to have this type of a structure. It is always going to look like four, it's, oh, sorry, it's always going to have three pieces, and I'm going to, I'm going to split this up a little differently. You're going to declare a variable, you're going to set a range, and then you are going to increment your variable. And I'm gonna explain what that looks like in a minute. Now, the most important thing for you guys as we move into loops is you need to make sure that this auto refresh button at the top of your page is turned off. And the reason for that is that computers expect loops to end and I can guarantee that every single one of you at some point this year is gonna make something called an infinite loop or you make a loop that accidentally runs forever and it is going to crash and freeze your browser. We will celebrate you thoroughly, so please report it in our Slack because we want to celebrate that you can now write powerful enough code to break something, um, but it is going to frustrate you a lot. So please make sure auto refresh is not turned on, and then we're going to start making our for loop. So the for loop is always going to look like this. It's going to be the word for, followed by parentheses, and then a curly brace to start and a curly brace to end. So in that way, it should look really, really similar to what we have done with conditionals, just now we're using the word for. The difference here is that inside of this, I need to declare a variable, set a range for my variable, and increment that variable to make this work. So the first thing I need to do is make this variable. I'm gonna call this variable i, because that is just the traditional way we do things with for loops. It stands for iteration. Every time the loop runs is an iteration. And I'm gonna say that i is equal to zero and then i'm going to put a semicolon and now i need to decide how long is this root loop running and i want this loop to run as long as i is less than 400 so i is going to run as long or the loop is going to run as long as i is less than 400. now in an ideal world to not create an infinite loop i need to increment this variable so that even though it starts at zero 
one day I is going to be bigger than 400. So I'm going to say that every time this runs, I needs to be equal to I plus 50. Every time this runs, I needs to be, I needs to have 50 added to it. So I equals I plus 50. Now, before we get this on the canvas, I just want to console.log this for you. I'm going to console.log I, and I'm just going to hit play so we can see what happens. And we should see that we get numbers that start at zero. Oh my God, this loop is really throwing me. I'm going to pause it. We should see that we get numbers that start at zero. Then the next time this loop is run, I is 50 because it added 50 to I. The next time this loop is run, I is 100. It added 50 to I again. The next time is 150 and it keeps going up. That's a bad example until it gets to 350. Now, the reason you don't see numbers past 350 is because if I were to add 50 to 350, I will suddenly be at 400. And this range is then not met. 400 is not less than 400, so my loop stops running. And because it's in the draw function, it's going to reset where I goes back to zero and the whole process repeats. And I know what you're thinking right now. This is all like fine and good, but what's the purpose of just printing numbers to my console. And y'all would be right in thinking that there's not a ton of purpose to that. So we're going to try and use what we just wrote to make a row of circles that go across my screen. So inside of my for loop, right under this console.log, I'm going to put in an ellipse and I'm going to plug in some values. So if I were to just plug in like 50, 100, We'll make the size 25. I'm just going to get one circle, even though it's in the loop. To make this draw many circles, I need to use this I variable somewhere in my ellipse. And if I want a row where it's going left to right across the page, I need that variable to control the X value of my ellipse. So I know that in an ellipse, it's X, Y, width, and sometimes there's that fourth value for height. I'm going to take this 50 out and I'm going to plug I in. And then I'm going to go ahead and hit play. And now we should see that across our screen, we have like eight different circles where the first one is being drawn at zero. The next one is drawn at 50, 100, 150, 200, all the way up to 350 on the X axis. And then it repeats and goes again. There are a few things I want you guys to play with here. So bear with me and then I'll explain your challenge. This right now is beautiful, but what if I change some of the numbers in my for loop? So for example, instead of having I start at zero, what if I started at 50? If I hit play now, we're going to see that everything shifted over a bit because now the first value of I is 50, the second value of I is 100, 150, so on and so forth, but it still cannot go beyond 350. I could also adjust what I'm adding to I. So instead of adding 50, if I were to add 25, I am now going to have even more circles more close together because I can add more times before I get to a number greater than 400. I could also try changing this 400 number. What if instead of I being greater than 400, it said greater than or equal to 400? Now I get one more circle out of the deal. What if it said 200? Now I have to stop sooner because we know that 200 is the middle of my canvas. What if it said 375? All of these are numbers that you guys are welcome to play with and try and adjust to get your for loops to look the way you want them to look. What you guys are going to do for like the back half of class, the thing you're doing on your own, is you are going to write two new for loops. You should use new variables in your for loops. That's a good practice. But here's what your for loops is go are going to do. First, you're going to write a for loop that will draw a series of shapes, ellipse, rectangle, whatever, it's up to you that go up and down the page instead of left and right. And then you are going to write a for loop that will draw a diagonal series of shapes that go diagonally across the page. Um, I will give you a big hint with the diagonal one. To have diagonal shift, you need to change both the X and Y value of a point in order to have it look like a diagonal change. Um, so I should see when I get this from you, three total for loops, I should see three lines of shapes, one that goes left to right that we coded together, one that goes up and down, and one that is diagonal. If you are feeling stuck, especially with the diagonal, I strongly, strongly, strongly encourage you to drop into the Slack, ask each other questions, 
try and get help because we have a lot of big brain power that I think can help us with this. All right, guys, I know for loops are weird, but I trust you to figure this one out. And we will also look at these in class together. Bye, guys.